premium diesel versus the crap stuff, lay out my jihad on bullshit suit, would you? We might need that. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. My recent report on premium unleaded petrol, that's gasoline if you're not from around here, was like a red flag to a bull. And by bull, I mean diesel vehicle owner. Many of which fine upstanding citizens wrote somewhat literally to me to inquire about the merits of premium in the diesel domain. Electrofiction was one such correspondent, and he said, It'd be great if you could do a similar video for premium diesel. The stench of bullshit from the fuel company's marketing departments is frankly breathtaking. Surely there's a nut or two to bust there. Mark Emerson also chimed in. What about premium diesel fuels? How do they work? At this point, I do believe we should go the full Sir David Attenborough and look at the ecosystem in which an unholy trinity rules the diesel roost. You've got the vehicle manufacturers, the fuel companies, and the government. A triangle of weasels, packed tight with mutual distrust and trilateral contempt. Yet, <laughs> the vehicles are useless without the fuels, and the fuels have no purpose without the vehicles. And of course, without the government, there would be many more unemployed lawyer assholes on the street begging in bad Armani, and nobody wants that. So you can see that this is a perfect system. It's like heaven, only on earth. Vehicles are designed to run on a particular kind of fuel, and those particulars are defined by a technical standard. The fuel is manufactured to meet that standard, and hypothetically at least, the government cracks the whip. And here in Australia, by crack the whip, I mean fall asleep at the wheel and ensure that our fuel quality here is among the shittest in the developed world. So thanks a lot for that, regulators. Here in Australia, the applicable standard for diesel is driven by a piece of legislation with the catchy name Fuel Standard Automotive Diesel Determination 2001. Kind of says it all there, asleep at the wheel, but only for the past 17 years. This document, still preserved in its official clay tablet form in Canberra, lays out the various environmental and operability standards, the physical properties for diesel. And all automotive diesel must meet those requirements or it may not be sold. In total, there are 19 different physical properties in the standard for diesel. Things like the cetane number and cetane index, which is kinda like the octane rating for gasoline. There's density, viscosity, lubricity, conductivity, water content, and flashpoint, and attention all you fez-wearing terrorists out there. Diesel is a crap fuel for a Molotov cocktail because the flashpoint is 61.5 degrees C, which is also why it's much safer for remote area refueling from a jerry can. Just saying. There are also limits for impurities in that legislation. 5% maximum biodiesel content, even though that flies under the radar because it's undeclared. There's ash, carbon residue, water and sediment, and of course the sulphur content. That's 10 parts per million currently. That's almost a homeopathy treatment dose right there when you think about it, the sulphur. The point is, your diesel engine is designed to run on diesel fuel that meets this standard, and it cannot be sold here unless it meets the standard. And this means the truth about premium diesel is 95% marketing bullshit. <laughs> Knock me down with a feather. The Fulbrook says, At Caltex, they have truck diesel and premium diesel. What the heck is the difference? Also, I have heard people say there is winter diesel and summer diesel. And 68404, <laughs> there's a catchy name. Parents must have been really prolific breeders to have to start numbering their kids in the days before the barcode. He or she asks me thus, Could you do something on premium diesel versus diesel? There's also truck diesel now being marketed. I thought all our diesel came off the boat from Singapore anyway and was low sulphur regardless these days. 
Can a modern single rail oiler ran happily on regular diesel? Yes, it can. It can ran happily. Your diesel will ran happily on any automotive diesel sold at any Bowser. Truck diesel relates to the pump, which offers a fatter nozzle and a higher, yes, volume flow rate and might not thus fit in a smaller diesel car, so there is that. It's kind of like a Great Dane mating with a lapdog. And there's an image that I hope lasts you until the next time you refill. What? Refill your car. Anyway, a modern contemporary long-haul truck is a very high-tech, healthy six-figure asset in a cutthroat business where every cent of operating costs really does matter. Any suggestion that truck diesel might be in some way inferior is categorically nuts when you think about it. But unlike premium gasoline, which offers a higher octane rating than regular and therefore a slight performance and or economy benefit, there is no cetane rating jump with premium diesel, at least not that they talk about. Engine performance will remain the same on premium diesel. Premium Diesel's alleged benefits are fluffy at best. It has an allegedly superior additive package that is allegedly designed to make your engine allegedly cleaner, whatever that means. It's BP's piranhas all over again, and it foams less on refilling, that's definite. Not that the foaming of standard diesel has ever really shat me off in some substantial way. Those mother lovers at Caltex actually make this official statement on the company's Vortex Premium Diesel entry. Want a fitter engine? Try our new Vortex Premium Diesel with upgraded magic ingredients additives. Vortex Premium Diesel helps keep your engine healthier for longer, giving it a physical workout every time. I'm not kidding. They actually do say that. A physical workout. In the immortal words of Olivia Neutron Bomb, let's get physical. And magic ingredients, those marketing assholes. I don't think they were channeling their inner Arthur C. Clarke. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. You know, I'm pretty sure that's absolutely true. If we were to reanimate Copernicus or James Cook or Magellan or perhaps Christopher Columbus or Isaac Newton or all of them, and we took them for a ride in a 787 Dreamliner or showed them GPS or even just let them make a telephone call from here in Shitsville to London, then I think they'd collectively conclude that we are all wizards now. Very Harry Potter. But I don't think Caltex is talking about that. Sufficiently advanced technology comprising magic. I think instead they're channeling the default marketing presumption that we are all dead from the neck up on technical matters. Channeling our inner bogans, perhaps. That's like an Australian redneck, only substantially dumber. However, if you read the fine print, it actually says that Vortex Premium Diesel, complete with alleged upgraded magical physical workout bullshit ingredients, merely conforms to the same standard as regular diesel, which your engine is designed to run on happily for about five laps of the planet. Carl Picorni says, Premium Diesel is designed to produce less soot, better via DPF. Really? I looked for that, and I could not find it anywhere, I must confess. And Jaco Olivia says, I did notice a small improvement, 0.5 litres per 100 kilometres, in fuel consumption by filling up with premium diesel. This is a different brand with measurements based on the car trip computer, so there is not much scientific proof here. On the topic of foaming, I am almost certain this is purely to do with the servo pump. All the points here by our previous two correspondents, categorically bullshit. No statements about soot or DPF durability are made by fuel companies in relation to premium diesel. No statements about intrinsically greater economy or performance are made. Foaming, definitely a product of the fuel's composition, not the pump. Shell says that its diesel extra premium diesel offering will help you, quote, use less fuel. But there's a disclaimer there that you should read 
in the fine print. Actual fuel savings and other product benefits will vary depending on age and condition of engine. Shell Diesel Extra is designed to avoid rising fuel consumption over the lifetime of your vehicle by helping to keep your engine running in accordance with manufacturer's specifications. So that claim is really just more nebulous bullshit wrapped around the non-specific maybe benefits of an alleged superior additive package, which of course pumps up the price and presumably the profit. Finally, there are a few different flavours of diesel across regions and seasons here in Australia, and they all have to do with a thing called the cloud point, which is real. If you want to understand cloud point, just get a bottle of olive oil and put it in the refrigerator and come back in an hour or so. Olive oil starts to turn to wax at about 4 or 5 degrees C. If you pull it out and put it back in the pantry, the clouds of wax in the oil, they just disappear. And that is the cloud point, the temperature. Diesel does exactly the same thing. And wax in diesel is, of course, undesirable because it doesn't flow down the fuel lines in that state. That's kind of bad if you want your engine to start. So they tweak the chemistry of diesel to reduce the cloud point in colder regions according to a standard called AS3570-1998. The maximum permitted cloud point is typically about 15 degrees C in warmer regions in summer, but it drops to minus 3 degrees in colder places in winter. I mention this cloud point business only because it might be a really bad idea to fuel up in Sydney or Melbourne in the middle of winter and then drive to the snow to shred some epic powder, get tanked and wake up nude next to your wife's sister, perhaps, and have absolutely no memory of what that actually means. More magic combined with a physical workout right there. Then you will be doubtless utterly dismayed and appalled that your diesel getaway vehicle refuses to start, thus derailing your plans for a cunning, expedient escape. What has occurred is that the fuel in the capital cities at this time of year has a cloud point of zero or minus one degrees, something like that. And that's what's in your tank doing a good impersonation of being quasi-solid because the ambient temperature out there is lower than the cloud point. And the temperature inside will doubtless drop even further when your disgraceful transgressions come to light. If only you had arranged instead to arrive at the ski fields in a low fuel state and then filled up most likely with a fuel like Calpe Calpex and Caltex Alpine Diesel, both of those, the cloud point of which is well below zero. Then your egress from this difficult extended family situation would be far smoother. And I think we'd all agree that's preferable in situations such as these. As things stand in closing, I'd respectfully suggest that if the clock on the chalet wall suggests that it really is time to come clean, even premium diesel's magic will be ineffective here. An imperfect place to commence your defence would be by offering a detailed summary of the fuel chemistry that led to this somewhat unfortunate chapter in all of our lives. I'm John Cadogan, channeling my inner Dr Phil. Subscribe now for more relationship hacks, guaranteed to smooth over the stormiest of magic physical workout events. I also hope that this report has helped you save a few bucks on diesel henceforth by understanding that really the main ingredient by volume in premium diesel is in fact marketing bullshit. Thanks for watching. 